After seeing creators like Codebullet destroying their own game with AI that over generations perfected the controls, I was mind blown. How to get started with AI is what I typed in my browser after that. What I got was an overwhelming response of areas to explore and tutorials showing beginners the basic principles. I only had one AI course in my luggage from uni and all we did then was a bunch of decision tree crap and I wanted that self-learning magic. This video is about what I've learned so far and I will explain everything you need to know uh, to get started. Note that I really advise you to read up about neural nets and other basic AI principles and uh, take time to go through the links below but it's not necessary to get started. So. I continued my journey and figured that machine learning was the area that I wanted to look into in order to create a similar setup with AI playing games. I started out with TensorFlow and watched several tutorials explaining the tool and its potential. I did a few examples of reinforcement learning uh, with data that comes with TensorFlow and I felt that I was ready to involve some games into my project. I started with Jim by OpenAI, which is an easy way to import games that got inputs and outputs that you can try your reinforcement learning algorithms with. Um, they got a basic environment such as uh, cart pole and mountain car, and more advanced environments like uh, Atari games or uh, robotic simulations. Most of the environments uh, has a leaderboard where you can compare results of different algorithms and approaches. After generating training data on card poll with random selected inputs and only picking the observations that I got a specific score or higher, I managed to solve the game, which means that I got an average reward higher or equal to 195 over 100 consecutive trials. And it was really cool to see the AI play the game and balancing the poll, but I felt like it was the evolution part that I found most interesting. How the random mutation could over generation lead to something that actually works and the fact that it's like simulating natural selection that has also led to this moment in time and it's happening all around us. Real Darwin shit that you can observe real time instead of looking for old relatives that had the mutation that led to the current offspring. I searched some more online and found that the algorithm that I should use is called NEAT which stands for Neuro Evolution of Augmenting Topologies. This algorithm uses generation populated with geomes that carries the genes that describe how to build a neural network. Each genome in each generation carries information or a set of genes specifying its nodes which translates to neurons and its connections between the neurons together with an innovation number. To evolve a solution for a problem, you need to provide a fitness function, which determines how well each genome in each generation is doing. The next generation is then reproduced, either sexual or asexual, with mutations of the most fit individuals from the previous generation. The mutations can add nodes or connections to genomes, so they may become more complex over time if needed. The one difficulty everyone keeps mentioning about this algorithm is how to handle the crossover between two networks with differing structures. Crossover is the process of sexual reproduction in which two genomes are combined. Neat handled this by keeping the track of the origins of the genes with an identifying number called innovation number, as mentioned before, to make sure that the crossover does not exclude any valuable mutation or merges multiple of the same features. When doing a crossover, you simply align the different connection genes with their corresponding innovation number. Each connection gene also carries information about the weight for that connection and the bias. It also carries a boolean value describing if the connection is enabled or not. When the connection genes are aligned, you compare the innovation number for each of the parent. If both parents got the same connection gene with the same innovation number, then these genes are homologous, which means that they got the same ancestors. You either take the gene from one parent or the other. I'm guessing this is based on how fit the parent is. If the parent is more fit than the other, it has a higher chance to pass over their genes. There are also disjoint genes, where only one of the parent got that specific gene, and there is no counterpart to it. 
genes that does not got a counterpart from the other parent and exceeds the other parent's maximum innovation number is called excess genes. Disjunct genes and excess genes does not have a common ancestor and are not homologous. The neat library for Python, which I use, does not care about the difference between disjunct and excess genes, same as most neat implementations. This means that it combines the homologous genes and copies the disjunct and excess genes from the most fit parent. To use this library, you do not need to know exactly how the crossover is done, but it's important to understand that the new population of each generation is derived from the previous generation, where some is a sexual product of two fit parents. Each generation is not only populated with crossover from fit parents, there are also mutations of the most fit individuals of the last generation. There are four to five different mutation types that can occur, which can be adding or disabling links, adding or removing nodes and shifting weights. The population of each generation is also divided into species determined by the genomic distance that is based on the similarity of the different genomes. In this way the different species only compete against each other and evolve simultaneously. This is to avoid quick elimination of high potential mutants. Okay, so now we got the basic about need or at least a basic understanding on what's going on. There's a lot more to discover under hood. Fuck that shit, let's start coding. I use the neat Python library, which is a Python implementation of the algorithm that you can download and use with the middens. Go check out the website with all info on how it works and how to install below. The first thing you will need to set up is a configure text file with different parameters that the algorithm will use and that will make it easy for you to change the algorithm to fit your problem. Here you can specify the different inputs and outputs you need and how many hidden nodes you can start with. You also set the population size and the fitness threshold along with many other parameters. That will control the mutation and crossover and much more. I took the template from their example to start with and changed some values depending on the project I work on. I suggest that you check out their explanation of all the parameters in order for you to understand what you need to tweak to get the desired result. After specifying all that shit, you should be good to go. As I mentioned, they have really good example in their documentation that show you how to properly set up your project with a library and it is what I based my project on so far. And now, let's finally solve the card pool game with Neat and get it over with. I made a function called eval genomes, similar to the example in the neat documentation. In this function I configured the net for each genome. Each genome starts with an initial observation of an array with zeros, which is because I did not find a way of getting the observation of the game without taking an actual action. They also initially start with a fitness of zero, there's only one way from here and that's up, hopefully. Now each genome will play the game creating an output based on the previous observation and either performing an action of 1 or 0. Each genome will continue until the game is done or it has failed. Either way the game is done. For each action it takes without failing it gets an incremented fitness. I think the max fitness or the max score for the game is 200. I also added that if it goes below a certain position or angle it gets a negative fitness and the game is done. This is because it's not necessary to continue with that run if it messed up balancing the pole. All this will continue for 50 generations and BAM we are finally there. When I try this game it gets a score of 200 over 100 tries which is maximum I believe. You might wonder why I did not set the maximum fitness threshold to 200 and that is because when a genome reaches a fitness of 200, it might not be optimal or even good. The game ends at 200, but that does not mean that the balancing could go on forever. Actually, the game is quite short and an individual might fail at balancing but still manage to keep up the pole upright for 200 actions. If you can keep the game running forever, then it might be good to keep a maximum threshold, but in this case it just limits the network to reach a better state. So that's all for this video, I hope that all this made some sense and that you can get started creating your own projects and involve your own neural networks. 
I will leave my code below as always. Next video is about using these methods to train a neural net to play another game that I made myself. If that sounds interesting, then consider subscribing and liking this video. Bye guys.